Hello, everybody. Welcome to this rapid application note uh, covering a quick setup for mobile access. Um, if you're not familiar with what mobile access is, uh, basically we have three different types of thin clients for the software. We have web thin clients, which is based on Internet Explorer, typically used in an office environment, although not limited to that. Um, and then customers asked us to um, uh, provide a way that they can view on their plant floor uh, but without having Internet Explorer. So we came up with a secure viewer thin client. Uh, now, both of those need to be on Windows-based machines, and both of those use ActiveX as the technology to pass data. Uh, what we've been doing for a number of years now is we, we have this, what we call Studio Mobile Access, or just Mobile Access. And this is based on HTML5. Now, you can use Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, maybe even some other browsers. Uh, I've heard Chrome, I know Chromium seems to work. Uh, Firefox does not seem to be uh, uh, working all that well. I don't know if that's an incompatibility with Firefox, but um, I would recommend these um, browsers. So if you didn't know this, you can actually go to the software website and, and uh, typically right off the product page, there's a demo for HTML5 available. And you can show that to your customers on a phone or a tablet and call that up, uh, just Google uh, for the product name and then get right to that um, uh, demo. Uh, so taking this idea of developing a project and then deploying it uh, to a runtime. Now that runtime can, server can be on a, on a server class machine. It can be on a laptop, a desktop, an industrial PC. I just wanna make sure that you don't confuse this name server. This is what we call the runtime. This does not have to be a server class piece of hardware. It can be um, you know, any runtime run that's uh, capable with the specs running the software. Now the idea, the ar architecture of this is, is take that runtime server uh, and if you have a network, you can then have these thin clients connected back to that runtime. Now if it's web thin clients, remember I said that needed to be Internet Explorer, that's typically in an office kind of environment, uh, or you can use the secure viewer thin clients, or you can use the mobile access uh, thin clients. Now, if that's on tablets or a phone, you're going to probably need a wireless network to get to that. But it doesn't have to be wireless. It can it could be a wired network uh, to do that. Now, just some quick things about licensing. Uh, with the runtime, uh, as of version 8.1, you now get one thin client of any type, uh, and you can add more of those uh, at a single at a time. So uh, if you need one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, ten, or up to a thousand of those, you can add those um, in quantities of one uh, up to a thousand. So uh, depending on how many uh, licenses you have, that's the number of total thin clients of any type uh, that you can support, mix or match. Uh, so um, you can have, again, mix and match of those. So uh, let's see how to set this up. Now, the first thing that I recommend is before you install the software, you should have gone into Microsoft IIS or, or uh, into Control Panel and uh, set up Microsoft IIS. If you did not do that, um, you can do this, like I'm going to show you here after the fact, and go to uh, Control Panel, go under Programs and Features, and turn Windows features on or off. And this will allow you to turn on Microsoft IIS. Uh, again, you should have done this, or it's best if you do this before you install the software, but if you didn't, you can go through these steps uh, and then uh, install the mobile access afterwards as well, and I'll show you how to do that. So here under Internet Information Services, this I believe comes with most versions of Windows that are kind of current. Uh, you just have to kind of turn this feature on or off or finish the installation. You can expand this and under Web Management Tools, make sure IIS Management Console is selected. That'll give you the tool to, to make sure that that works, although that's not necessarily to get that to, to run. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit here and go under World Wide Web Services and then expand the application development features, then you will check the .NET extensibility, uh, whatever versions are shown here. I happen to have 3.5 and 4.7. I believe there's a 4.6. But again, whatever versions are shown there. Also, the ASP and ASP.NET, again, whatever versions. I have 3.5 and 4.7. Uh, I'm sure there are other versions. But if you check those, I believe it will automatically check the um, ISAPI 
extensions and filters for you. But if they're not checked, go ahead and check those. So again, if you did that before you installed the software, it'll automatically find that, install the necessary stuff. If you didn't do that ahead of time, what you should do is go into your uh, file manager and where you have the product installed. So depending on which product, it might, might be in different uh, folders, but uh, if I go under program files x86, go to where the product is installed and go under the redist folders for the full version of Windows, uh, you can go to the web add-on and then click IIS. And then in here, uh, you can run the mobile access setup. Now, if you had IIS pre-installed before you installed the software, it would have automatically done this uh, this setup. If you installed IIS after you've installed the software, that's when you need to run the mobile access setup uh, so it can interact with IIS and, and kind of put its extensions in there. And what that is essentially doing is going into the C, full, uh, the C drive and then under INET pub uh, in the uh, WW root folder, it will have added the necessary product name in here uh, and, and version to be able to get at that uh, kind of those extensions. So uh, if I close this and now what I did before I started this video is I had started an application and let me just delete these couple of objects here. And I put a, a bar graph on the screen, tied it to a tag called temperature. And then I put a slider on the screen, tied it to that same tag and made my screen called startup. I also temporarily disabled security just so that doesn't get in the way for this demo, uh, but I don't recommend that you do that on, a, on most real applications, keep security in, in installed and as you should. Uh, so I just wanna make sure that you see that this works. Now the next step is to then publish your screen. So um, probably a good idea to stop your project. Uh, I don't know if it's 100% necessary, but close your screen, stop your project, and then come up here to the file icon, publish, save all as HTML. Now, because I did this before the video, there, there will be another uh, pop-up there that uh, asks you if you wanna enable the TCP IP server, go ahead and do that. Uh, and I only have one screen, so that was fairly quick. So I've published those screens as HTML. Now, I'm using 8.1, version 8.1 service pack four. And in 8.1 service pack four, there's actually a new feature that when you do the publish, it sets up uh, the task, the mobile access runtime task to automatic. Uh, but prior to uh, Service Pack 4, in Service Pack 3 and before, ser including Service Pack 3, you would have had to go into this thin client's mobile access and gone into here at least once, just open it and you can immediately close it and it will set that mobile access task up to automatic. Uh, but what, since I'm in here, I'm just going to show you this, that you can change the value that from default here for process values, this is your tags, the tag update rate, it defaults to 1000. I'm just going to uh, put that down to 200 for the, this demo. Uh, you can also uh, check some of these checkboxes to improve performance. And depending on your uh, screen size, so for example, if you have a large screen that you're trying to display on a small phone, uh, well, this auto screen scaling, which is the default setting, that will show full screen edge to edge as big as it can uh, within the browser environment. Uh, but if you rotate your, your device, it will, again, fill as much as it can. But if you're just playing a large screen on a small device, maybe the user can't see that very well. What you might wanna do is change this to custom zoom and then a multi-touch device, the user can pinch and zoom and be able to, to zoom into the, the details and see um, a, a zoomed in version of that screen. But again, this is uh, auto screen scaling will fill that as big as it can and just some settings in there to pay attention to. But uh, for Service Pack 4, I didn't even really need to open this. Uh, I'm just gonna say okay there. Now, the other thing that you need to do is you need to make sure your project is running. Uh, without a running project, you have nothing to point to, you know, you know, graphics and no data at that point. So once I get this running, then I can open up Chrome and point to a particular URL, which is, I'll show you the formatting and the help 
Uh, but basically it's the IP address of the runtime machine. So I'm showing you this on my local machine so I can use my local loopback. But if you're using a phone, then you would point it to the IP address of the runtime computer. And in this case, it's the IWS 8.1, but it could be ITEH for InTouch Edge 8.1, uh, whatever the product is you're using, and index.html. And if you use stop there at the index.html, it'll go to uh, the the, there's a kind of a tiled screen, but if you complete this URL with a question mark screen equals and then the name of the screen, let me hit refresh here, then you'll be prompted for security. In this case, I've turned off security, uh, but then I can click on this little green arrow and it will go right to that screen, in this case called main. And you can see that I can then interact with this and change the values. Now, I do wanna point out that if you make changes to your screen and you come in here and you add graphics, uh, whatever those may be, uh, you do have to publish your screen again. So here I can come in and, and hit publish. Uh, no, it says warning, you have to uh, uh, close all of your screens. That way everything it knows is saved and it's got the most recent copy of that. So you don't uh, try to push something out that's not the most recent. So save all as HTML. And then I can run my project again and I'll navigate back to my browser. Good idea at this point to hit refresh here and open that back up again. And you can see that it, it took those changes in. So uh, I, I'm gonna go, let's see. Uh, so some things to understand beforehand. Uh, back here on the help, if I go to the thin clients under mobile access, it's a good idea to check out the supported features. Um, we currently support 100% of the objects, but not 100% of those objects are, uh, let me say that again, 100% of the objects are supported, but not 100% of the features within those objects are supported. So some of the advanced features and, and, and whatnot of those uh, objects we just haven't gotten to yet. We are ex expanding the feature set all of the time. Uh, typically with each version we're adding to this. So it's a good idea for each version uh, or before you start your application to make sure that the features that you're looking for are in fact supported. And you can come into this again, that's uh, here under Thin Clients, Mobile Access Supported Features. Another thing to take a look at is um, here under Navigation, link directly to a project screen or screen group. Here's how you can see the formats of those URLs, whether or not you wanna get directly to a screen. If you know the screen name, you don't need the extension, but if you're using a screen group, uh, you need the name of the group and then .sg for screen group. That's so it can differentiate between the, the screens and the screen groups. Also down here, you'll see that you can use guest login, username, and both username and password, and uh, just, just to uh, show you how those different uh, formats are done. So uh, one of the other things that I wanted to show before we wrap up, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, there, are, Even though you can use this just as a browser, and I think that's uh, a very big benefit, so you don't have to install an app or maintain an app. Uh, uh, it's just browser-based, which is really nice. We have been asked by customers to add apps to kind of simplify the navigation and simplify for their users. Maybe they don't want um, uh, browsers out there for uh, their customers so or their users. So here under the Google Play Store for Android, it's via mobile access you can search for, just search for mobile access. So it's shown as Aviva, uh, this little icon here. And in the Apple uh, Store, I think you have to search for HMI slash SCADA mobile access, also show for Aviva. Uh, and that'll work for both IndoSoft and InTouch Edge. And then you'll be uh, uh, set that up, configure that for the IP address. Again, that's the IP address of the runtime computer. And then you can set up the startup screen, or in this case, here's a startup group, uh, or I said, should say the um, name of the group dot sg for the screen group if it's a group and then any additional parameters uh, for that as well uh, so uh, make sure i covered everything and i'm looking at some notes off screen uh, a real big miss is to uh, uh, make make sure that you have your application running because if it's not running it can't can't find all the stuff that it needs and uh, i think that's all i wanted to show for now so uh, with that, uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it and uh, good luck.
Have a great day.